up guys welcome to 2023 uh yeah start of a new year uh back into it now for after that long holiday that i had i haven't had well i haven't done a video since uh what november it's been a while all right uh so i put up a post in uh just get the list up put a post in the facebook group about what people wanted to see just a bit of chat reviews so I don't know, I think it was about 13 or so, but don't really have time for all that. So we've got, I'm going to go through Bitcoin, ETH, Litecoin, Gravity, Binance, Coin, Matic, and Solana. They were the top votes. So let's kick on. So we'll start with, with the corn. Uh, let's have a look here. This is the weekly... Where's previous swing high? Oh, it's not on here. Here we go. Here's previous swing high. This is the BitMEX chart, so uh, which is why it has all that history. So uh, we're almost we're almost back to you know the previous swing that was there before. Uh, price is still at eighteen. I'm not I'm not bullish until we get. Where's my pen? Like pen, yeah, like until we get into this area above here, I I'm not really that interested to be honest. Um, I mean, for me personally, right? It's like I I have enough in my cold storage for me to be happy. Um, if you don't have enough, buying here is like a great level. So you know why not? Um, it is below all time high retest though. So yeah, we could easily have price. Just zoom in a bit. Could easily have pro every time. Easily have price just come up into here and then just go down, right? Because what what it's doing at the moment is just doing uh, up then down, up down. We're doing. It could just keep zigzagging down until we hit the next um level which is like around here so between 12 and 13. so for me until we start printing higher lows i'm not calling bullish the stock market's still not the greatest um you know the the fed's still talking about rates and like, and all of this stuff is correlated, right? So there's no point getting excited and saying it's the bottom. I don't, it, it, to me, it's not until price does that or at least hovers here, then starts doing this, right? It's just not, even just from a TA perspective, simple TA, it's not. So like if we quickly look at the stock market, see, even, even the S&P is still in this um in this downward trend right it hasn't even broken this so like it could but it hasn't so here you want to see you know that sort of stuff you know are we going to get that i don't know i mean it's you shouldn't be trading based on guesses anyway you should be looking at what the chart's saying right now and right now it's saying bearish same thing here it's got this we're coming into this uh resistance area so it could hit that and just fall right so um are there any short-term sort of trades i mean we've had this huge spike up here on good volume so that's that's a good sign um and we've passed here so i mean if you got in somewhere down here i'd say that like the first target would be this little pink area potentially well, now that i look at it a bit more see the line is here now if we come across here it sort of lines up with this area so yeah if you're in a trade you want to be careful that you don't just hit this resistance and then bounce down um yeah but you know for me as far as the whole macro turning around let's you know get bullish again i'm not interested until we get back up to here um there is signs of life though, like lots of people are, you know, happy 
you know, they're talking about, you know, all these NFTs that are, that are popping off and, you know, Solana's done whatever it has from the bottom. Uh, just quickly, let's have a look. What was that? Like $8.30 up until seventeen sixty nine. So that's doubled in a little bit. So it's done well. Uh, the problem that I'm seeing here, it's still, it's still zigzag down, down like this. So I could easily just do that, right? If I move this to where that's topped out at, the week's not over, but you know, it's coming into where these wicks were before. That's better. Yeah, so zigzag down like this, right? So the resistance area is here, which is the same as where these wicks are here, right? You know, people are getting excited and you know rightly so i mean it's doubled so if you bought the lows and you've doubled your money great but <laughs> it's still i mean this is this here is the sam getting arrested dump right um so until solana gets back into the 30s i'm it's still uh it's still bearish for me it's still bearish i mean it is under so much pressure it's tokenomics are atrocious like all the vcs um you know they're they're dumping i mean they're still up multiples right so you know they bought less than a dollar why wouldn't you be selling i mean you'd be definitely selling uh you know in these conditions like being um you know being in the bear you know in the bear market that we're in so you know why wouldn't you uh you know you can't fault them for that but you know for us if we're looking at Solana or any coin that is under heavy VC ownership, all these un unlocks are starting now. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of these coins got released or funded in that in the last couple of years, so the unlocks are starting. Um, you know, some of them have you know what like the the standard unlock thing is like a four year type thing. Now, depending on the coin, there might be different unlock schedules. Um, I think Solana was seven years. It might be, or it might be confusing that with Serum. Um, in any event, it's a linear unlock. Um, so there's a ton of sell pressure until that goes away. It's going to be really, really difficult for Solana to get back up here. Um, and by back up here, I mean up in this region. Up in here, I mean, if Solana gets back up into like the 80s, where this dip is here, um, I'd be taking profit, you know, if you've got some. Because it could end up, this whole cycle could end up being like happened back here in 2019, right? So you've got the bottom here and it sort of recovers and then it recovers halfway so people that got wrecked back here are now going, oh, you know, I might be able to get some of my money back. So, you know, why wouldn't I take some profit here? And then, of course, people start taking profit in here and then it gets weak. But then, you know, it becomes this broadening, descending wedge type thing, right? And then it just mooned from there. So this is where the halvening is, right, for the previous one. So that could happen again here so this section could be this section and we get this sort of recovery up until here like in the 35s um so you know if you were you know buying high if you were if you bought high on solar on well on anything really and it's recovered all the way back to the mid-range You'd be going, you know, thanks very much. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bail now, and then you'll have all these other people that bought low or was DCAing and trying to reduce, well, yeah, trying to reduce their um, their entry price, get it as low as they could, and they could be back to break even here or maybe in a little bit of profit. So it could end up being looking like it could end up looking like that, like this part. 
And then I think the halving when's always oh, double check when the next halving is. Uh, March 18, 2024, according to Google. So back here, March 18, 2024. So that's about here. About here where the cursor is. Let's get a, let's get a vertical line. Uh, there that'll do so that's the that's where the halving is so we've got how many weeks we've got 60 weeks so a little bit over a year 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 and a quarter so generally the price starts to improve before halving will that happen this time who knows, right? But if it continues to stay under here, I'm not interested. Like this is, to me, this area here is no man's land, right? You're either buying this, this order block here at 12K, like between, what's that, like 10 and 12-ish, right? Because this is, there's nothing here but air. But the only thing that's holding it up is this little weekly bit here at 16 and then after that it just dumps straight down to 12 so not for me um yeah so for me i don't know if, you, if you're dcaing now you know continue to do that um if you're not dcaing then i wouldn't worry about it i would if price does get back um to this area then you know load up some more if you've got some money um, let's look at ETH because that's in a different spot. Like <clears throat> the equivalent to the 12 K on ETH is about 800 bucks, but it's had a good rally. But the problem is that rally has gone straight into resistance. So, um, and that resistance is also against this, um, this trend line here, right? <sighs> which looks like is going to turn into a doji reversal so that's not great so again for me it's very simple if we're going to enter long again on ETH, you want it to come up sort of reject here and then bounce and then this would be your first target which is almost 2000 um or you're shorting here back down to there back down to this um trend line so it really depends on the wider market. Why do you keep doing that? Um, you know, all the all the trend following RSI type stuff is all all peaking. There's a lot of volume there, so it pumped up through. So and it's sort of you know it's hanging there. So there's there's demand there for some reason. Um, so that's a good thing, right? But you know, Bitcoin and ETH are all correlated as much as the maxis would believe you otherwise but it is you know so what do i think i think eth is a wait and see eth is in this triangle here it is stuck it's behind resistance and a whole bunch of emas so nothing really to do it is looking healthy though um yeah it really depends on the rest of the wider market you know what what the fed does and stuff like that uh the next one let's look at litecoin litecoin i think is in a similar spot yep so you know it's right at resistance emas uh this is the binance chart um would have thought it had more history anyway so yeah so again same we want it to come up back and go and then no, it'd be around here would be the first targets um litecoin has a halving coming up which i don't know maybe maybe google can tell me uh litecoin halving oh not bitcoin halving i said litecoin litecoin 
like when halving date. That is July 2023, right? Okay. So that is this is the weekly chart. So that is probably you know around here, right? The end of where this drawing is. So 28 weeks. Yeah, so it's about six months time. <clears throat> Is it going to have the same effect as Bitcoin? It might. The same maths are involved. Is the same, you know, community reaction, is that going to happen? So there's a Litecoin halving. It's going to happen about here. Uh, one to keep an eye on, though, definitely, just because of the halving thing, right? I mean, as far as buying it right here, I wouldn't be doing that because you're buying at resistance. Um... Like if ETH breaks out and Bitcoin breaks out, Litecoin will follow. So, you know, watch it. But, you know, here's Bitcoin. It's sort of just peaking along with everything else. So it's topping out. So it might get some profit takers here because it's like but pretty much straight up for the last 12 hours. Definitely going to be some profit taking soon. Um, I'll leave GFI to last. BNB is next. BNB has just been going sideways. BNB is under huge FUD from, you know, all of this FTX stuff. There are people now questioning whether Binance is solvent and things like that. Um, you know, there's been hit pieces and articles and stuff written about it. So, yeah, I don't see much. I, don't, I do not see much movement in this coin until all that gets... Um, cleared up because it's all about the narrative it doesn't matter what the facts are that is the trend that it needs to break and it hasn't so it has been in this accumulation area since may of 2022 um so that's a good eight months just of sideways nothing um not sure who's holding it up, whether it's CZ or or what, but um, I mean, buying BNB isn't a bad idea if you believe in CZ and the company and everything that it's you know all it's doing. The chart wise, it's in a bit of a meh spot. So you know you want to clear all this, come up and clear all this junk and then sort of, you know, and then go for it. So above 320 or you want to be buying at the bottom of the range in here at about 220. So it's just sort of in the middle of this area and it's like, yeah, you're gambling here, right? So, I mean, all trading is gambling, but I mean, you're really gambling here because it could just like fall back down to here. So at least with here, you got more chance of it bouncing than you do here. And that's all it is really, is just, you know, what's the probability of things happening? So there's more chance it's going to bounce here and there's more chance it's going to stop and get rejected here. And in the middle is like, well, it's in the middle. So just wait, be patient, right? Plenty of other coins and NFTs and stuff to buy. You don't have to do this. Um, Matic was the other one. Matic kind of looks like BNB. If I just quickly go between them both you see that looks the same huh so matic that doesn't make sense let's have a look at this and that's not really a trend line it's not the greatest trend line in the world um but it's in a similar spot right so at least here i guess it's at the lower extremities of the support area at 77 cents um, and it's been in this range again, the same amount of time that Binance has, you know, whatever that means, right? It's definitely correlated with BNB. Um, the, the main talking points about Matic is that they are buying up everything rather than, well, the, one of the narratives is they're buying up everything rather than developing stuff on their own. So they're buying, um, you know, ZK Snark technology and they're buying up NFT projects to try and create a community 
And the argument against that is that communities are just created naturally. You can't manufacture one. You can't buy them. Um, you know, if you're looking at the NFT sales on Polygon, they are abysmal. Um, that being said, that Utes D-Gods thing hasn't finalized yet. We know it's, they bought them for like 3 million to bring them over. That was the, that was the sweetener. I don't think they're over there yet. Um, but they certainly, like Polygon certainly has a lot of work, a long way to go to get their NFT ecosystem going. So, I mean, F is the clear leader in terms of transactions and value, um, Solana is second easily, and then after that, there's basically nothing. So it'll be interesting to see if they can do it. Because eventually, Matic, eventually Matic will run out of money. I mean, you can't just keep buying things and buying things and buying things, right? You're going to run out of money soon. Um, and if nothing sticks, what, what do you do? Um, there's only so many tokens that they can um, give to people. I don't know how much is in their treasury, but right. So something needs to stick for them because DeFi is just dead everywhere. Um, the only thing that's really going at the moment is NFTs and GameFi stuff, the new stuff, because DeFi is dead. Um, yeah. So would I buy Matic now? No, not really. Um, if it was lower, if it was like 77, maybe even underneath that, but like, but then again, if it falls underneath that, it could just continue to fall. So, I mean, where it is now is in a good safe spot, but it's still in this sort of meh range. Um, the last one on the list is Sol. Let's go back to the Sol chart and see if there's anything else I need to talk about. No, I don't think so. So yeah, it's it's under it's underneath resistance. It's had a good run up from here. People are going to take profit here. It's been sitting here for three days. Is it just going to roll over or not? Right. Buying soul here is silly. It's at resistance. Right. Buying it back here when everybody was fighting it to death. I remember that. Um, because it was in between Christmas and New Year's and I had a hangover or whatever and I was just scrolling Twitter and everybody's giving it heaps of shit and it went all the way down to seven bucks and I thought, oh, if only I had my ledger. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, is Solana's definitely, like the price, it's tokenomics is just hammering it to death. Um. But, um, you know, as far as activity is concerned, um, you know, wallet, there's heaps of wallets still running. Um, NFT, NFT sales are still, uh, there's still millions and millions of dollars worth of NFTs being sold. So as long as that continues to go, it's fine. Uh, Solana DeFi, that's dead in the water. Like the TVL is totally gone. There's not a lot going on there. Uh, NFTs, the phone, you got this new meme coin now, which is sort of trying to revitalize things. So the community certainly isn't dead. Uh, yeah, but the coin is under so much sell pressure. So you want to be careful if you want to get back into this. So, you know, level by level. Now, the next, uh, the last one, the last one is gravity, which was on on the list. Now the thing with gravity is the biggest problem that it has is this is this number here. Now this is Dex Guru, so the, this is one of the better ones for Polygon tokens, right? So don't go to CoinGecko or anything like that. They're not going to give you the right figures. So total liquidity. In order to buy this thing, there's only $140,000 of total liquidity. That's it. So, and people are celebrating it going from the lows here up until the top, 
which was like 7x, which is great, right? But the problem is if you've got any sort of decent money in there, you wouldn't be able to sell it without huge slippage. So down here, I've got like a million GFI is $7,259, right? If you put that through in one order, it would slip it 5.5% and you'd only get 6,800. And it gets worse the more, the more you put in. So here's 2 million coins, which is 14 grand. You're slipping it 10%. 10%. Anyway, it doesn't take much to really create a price on this. Like if I go, if I say 10 million, which is 72 grand, 35% slippage, right? 72 grand being half the token liquidity. Like $72,000 for whales or even semi-serious traders isn't a lot of money. So people that are buying this are only buying it in like maybe like 10, 100 bucks at a time. Like if you, you can't see it here. We can see it over here, but even in, in the activity on the pool, um, the pools themselves, you know, see only 100 bucks is going in, 20 bucks is going in. 3,000, 1,000, 40 bucks, 154 bucks. That This is not a lot of money. The people are celebrating this thing going up 7x and it's great. But, you know, if you're only putting in 100 bucks and it goes 700 bucks, that's not going to change your life. It's good from a whole numbers perspective, but if you're looking for something to go and, you know, make yourself a whole bunch of money, just be aware that you're not going to be able to chuck in thousands or tens of thousands into this because you are going to lose big on slippage. Don't get me wrong, right? GFI, the project is great. And the silo stuff that's coming out is really good too. The biggest problem that they have is there's no liquidity. Nobody's using, nobody's using the, the service, right? If people were using the service, then um, this wouldn't be a problem and you'd be able to get in and out and the price would be way more stable and people would be um, more comfortable in holding the token. So, you know, it's hard to bring people in and say, oh, you know, buy this token when it's so illiquid. Like in the last 24 hours, it's done $78,000 worth of trading. So... You know, and that's about 10 million coins. Um, those people that have been in gravity since the start would be fine because 80% uh, of the tokens were given out to the community via the staking contracts. And, you know, there's been, they've been compounding and everything. So they should be fine. Anyone that bought at the, in the depths of the, of the bear, should be fine like even around here like it's been in this area what's it now almost a year you would have made like if you bought gravity any time in the last 12 months you've made money the problem is can you actually exit the position um so yeah there be a lot of happy people right now just be careful with the liquidity you need it because as soon as somebody, see, even just look at this candle here, it's big, it's a big drop, right? And that's probably only like one or two people. As soon as this starts to do this, everyone will get scared and it'll cascade all the way down. Because that's what happened here. Doesn't take much on a low liquidity coin like this. Um, so enter safely on this one. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. That's, that's long enough. I think one, two, three, four, five. Yes. Yeah, so that's seven coins. Uh, hopefully that gave you something to go on a nice, uh, overview, high level sort of stuff. Um, once I start getting back into my trading, which is what I intend to do this year, um, you know, because I've sold, you know, I sold a lot of my coins throughout the year and, you know, bought the house that I'm in like this one. Um, 
you know, so all my stables are basically all gone and anything that I've got left over, I need to, you know, use that for tax and whatever. So I'm going to start trading a small account and then build it up. I've still got my cold storage stuff, but you know, I want to get, uh, you know, my stables back up again. So in order to do that, the best way will be, you know, doing trading with the NFTs or just alts. So we will concentrate on that going forward. I think, um, it's going to be, going to be tough though, because everything's all choppy and crab market sideways. So hopefully, you know, the fed will give us some good news. Eh? Anyway, that's it for this one. Talk to you soon. See ya.